Today we're going to learn some basic concepts about what pneumonia looks like on a chest x-ray and in particular about the silhouette sign on chest radiographs. By the end of this video and the workshops that will follow it, you will know about the lobes of the lung, you will understand the concept of consolidation due to pneumonia, you will understand the meaning of the term silhouette sign and also be able to identify examples of the silhouette sign on chest radiographs. Before we learn about pneumonia and the silhouette sign, we need to learn a little bit of basic chest x-ray anatomy. This is a frontal chest x-ray. It's called a frontal chest x-ray because it looks as if we're looking at the patient from their front. This is the left side of the patient and this is the right side of the patient. Each lung is divided into a number of distinct anatomical parts or lobes. The right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes. Let's look first of all at the left lung. The left lung is divided into an upper lobe, looks something like this projected on the chest x-ray, and a lower lobe, which overlaps it like this. Remember these are three-dimensional, not two-dimensional structures. This is the patient's lateral chest x-ray and here we're looking from their side. This is the front of the patient and this is the back of their patient. The left upper lobe lies at the front like this and the left lower lobe lies at the back or posteriorly like this. Now let's turn our attention to the right lung of the patient. The right lung has three lobes, as we said. It also has an upper lobe here. It has a lower lobe, but in addition, it has a middle lobe that overlies the other two lobes, kind of sitting somewhere in here and abutting up against the right heart border. On the lateral chest x-ray, remember we're looking from the patient's side here and that this is the front of the patient. The upper lobe is again anteriorly closer to the front, it's a little smaller than on the left. The lower lobe, that's the upper lobe there, the lower lobe is very similar posteriorly and the right middle lobe fits in like a little triangle overlying the heart between the two. We see things on radiographs because of differences in density. So the lungs are much less dense than the soft tissues of the abdomen or the soft tissues of the heart and that allows us to distinguish between them. While we know that within the heart itself there are a number of different densities and structures such as the cardiac valves, the chambers of the heart and so on, we can't see them because the difference in densities of these structures is not enough to us to sufficiently image them on a radiograph. There is, however, sufficient density between the structures of the mediastinum, down here, and the right side of the heart, and the structures in the mediastinum on the left, and the left side of the heart, and the lungs, for us to be able to see them very clearly, and the same between the lungs and the hemidiaphragms. Similarly, on the lateral chest x-ray, we see the diaphragms. That one there is the left hemidiaphragm, and this one is the right hemidiaphragm. Because they have air here against the soft tissue structure of the diaphragm and the abdominal organs, we see the posterior aspect of the heart, and the anterior aspect of the heart because they have air rather than soft tissue against them. We don't see a real good border here where the soft tissue of the heart is right up against the soft tissue of the diaphragm. The lungs contain thousands of grape-like sacs or air sacs called alveoli across which air exchange um, occurs. We don't see these on a chest radiograph, they're much too small and what we're really just seeing is the air within these sacs, which is going to appear black on a chest radiograph. In patients who have pneumonia, however, 
These sacs fill with a combination of pus and fluid and bacteria and instead of appearing black they're going to appear white or opaque and this process is called consolidation. Now let's see how this looks in a patient with pneumonia. On the left there's a chest x-ray from a normal patient and you can see how the lung looks nice and dark, it's full of air, you can see both diaphragms very well. On the right there's a patient who has a pneumonia in her right lower lobe and in her you can see this large white area, this area of consolidated lung sitting in the lower lung zone here and while you can see one diaphragm, and this is the one on the left, we can only see part of this right hemidiaphragm. Now let me just rub this ink out for a moment and we can magnify up this lung and then we can look at it a little bit better without these red marks here. Now if we look closely at this consolidated lung, this area of pneumonia, you might notice a few black lines here, lines uh, or tubes. And these are large bronchi, bronchi are the tubes that lead to the alveoli, which are still filled with air, but are surrounded by this consolidated lung, and that's called air bronchograms, and those are another sign of a pneumonia. Now when an area of consolidation lies up against one of the borders of the heart, like here against the right border of the heart, or here against the left border of the heart, you're going to obscure that heart border. You're going to not lose its normal silhouette, and this is called the silhouette sign. The same can happen if one of the areas of consolidation are up against one of the hemidiaphragms. You will no longer see that hemidiaphragm. You'll lose its silhouette, and again, it's an example of the silhouette sign. Here's a little experiment I did. Here's a radiograph of a jug of ice. The jug is completely filled with ice and half filled with water and a radiograph is taken from the side. The ice that's floating above the water here, you see very nicely, there are nice silhouettes of the ice. The ice that's below the level of the water in here, you can't see because the density of ice is extremely similar to that of water, and so we've lost the silhouette, if you like, of the ice cubes here. And this is the same as what happens in the lung when the lung becomes consolidated. Now let's see that silhouette sign in a real patient. This is a patient who has a right upper lobe pneumonia. This is their chest x-ray and here's a CT scan with slices through about the same area. You can see on the left how they have this area of consolidation, this pneumonia in their right upper lobe. And you can see where on the normal patient you could see a nice interface between the air and the lung down the left side of the mediastinum. In this case you can't. And you can see why when you look at the CT scan that this lung is just sucked full of pus and you know, yucky stuff all up here and there is no clear density difference between the mediastinal structures and that lung. Let's look again at that patient who had a right lower lobe pneumonia. Here's that area of consolidation in the right lower lobe. And notice how while we can see the left hemidiaphragm very clearly, we don't see the majority of that right hemidiaphragm. We've lost its silhouette, and that is a, the silhouette sign that's associated with a lower lobe pneumonia. Notice, however, we do see the right heart border. And that's because the right heart border is abutted by the right middle lobe, not the right lower lobe. On the lateral study, which we saw before, here's that left hemidiaphragm. We see it just fine, but we only see part of the right hemidiaphragm. This part is lost. There's a silhouette sign because of the consolidation which abuts it and which is of the same density. Now this patient also has an area of consolidation and pneumonia in the lower part of their right lung. But you can see here the big difference is while in the last patient we could see the right heart border, here that right heart border is completely lost, but in this patient we can see the right hemidiaphragm. And this triangular area of opacity is very typical of a pneumonia in the right middle lobe, 
because the right middle lobe abuts the right heart border. On the lateral study, if you remember, the right middle lobe was that little triangle that fitted in and was um, displayed over the heart, and we can see that area of opacity right there. Now let's compare and contrast two patients who have pneumonia in their left lung. In this patient here, you can see an area of consolidation right here, kind of in the left lower mid lung zone, overlying the heart. But notice how you can see that left heart border really well. You can't, however, see all of the left hemidiaphragm. You've lost this little bit here that comes up towards the spine. Let me just erase that so you can see it a little bit better there. So this patient has an ammonia in the left lower lobe. The left lower lobe doesn't touch the left heart border, but it does touch the left diaphragm. Let's look at the other patient. They have an opacity, an area of pneumonia that looks kind of the same, in the same area in the lower lung zone. But notice here the difference is we don't see the left heart border and we do see the left hemidiaphragm. So our silhouette is of the left heart border and this patient has a left upper lobe pneumonia. So during this lecture you've learned about three main areas. Number one, the lobes of the lung. Number two, the radiographic appearance of consolidation, particularly as it applies to pneumonia. And number three, the silhouette sign. The next two workshops are going to consolidate your knowledge, excuse the pun, and then they're going to see whether you can manage to apply these new skills that you've learned to the interpretation of some chest x-rays. Thank you for listening.